Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our series on energy modeling fundamentals with Honeybee. And in the previous videos, we worked toward assembling the geometry of our single family home energy model here. And in this video, we're going to look at some of the non geometric attributes that have been assigned to this model for energy simulation. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to turn the preview off on this visualize by type which was very helpful for us understanding the geometry that we were adding to our model, but isn't going to be as helpful here for these non-geometric attributes that we want to understand. So instead of using this visualize by type component, I'm going to use another component that's under this one visualize tab of Honeybee, and it's simply called HB color room attributes. And if I drag and drop this component on the canvas, and read the description, you'll see the component tells us it can create a colored visualization of room attributes in the Rhino scene for us, given either a list of rooms or a model and an attribute with which that we want to preview. So I'm just going to go straight and connect our model up to this color rooms attribute component. And you'll see the only other thing that we need in order for the component to run is this attribute input. And this is specifically meant to take the input of a, a drop down list which you can actually find under the visualize tab right next to the color face, color room attributes component. There's this component called HB room attributes. And if you drop this component on the canvas, you'll see it's a little, it's not really a conventional type of ladybug tools component and that it's doesn't really have inputs, but it does have, give you a list of a useful list of attributes that you are able to look at in the Rhino scene. So just plugging in, for example, our display name, You'll see it'll tell us what the name of our room is in our model here, or it could tell us things like what the volume of the room is. In, in this case, this is in Rhino model units or cubic meters, or it could tell us things like the floor area or exposed wall area. Uh, lots of interesting things that it can tell us, uh, and even like the exterior aperture area, right? So we can get a lot of useful bits of information from this component, but all these are still attributes that largely have to do with geometry. They aren't really the energy attributes that I promised you we would be trying to understand in this video. And that's because we've only been looking at this honeybee tab so far, which is really just for the these core geometry attributes. And if we actually want to understand the energy specific attributes that are being assigned to our geometry, we should go over to this HB energy tab. It looks like a little flame or, you know, it'll say HB energy if you're if you're using the text uh, to display your your tabs there. But under the energy tab, there is a zero sub tab for this called basic properties. And you'll see that there is another HB attri room attributes component here, but this one is specifically called room energy attributes. And if I drag and drop this onto the canvas, you'll see it's a lot like the HB room attributes, except that this one, if I click on the little arrow, is going to give me all of the energy specific attributes that are assigned to our rooms when we create them. And so you see there are a lot of inputs for an energy model. And this is one of the reasons why I said in the beginning energy modeling is so hard, is that there are a lot of things to keep track of, a lot of things being assigned to these rooms. So let's start to delve into this and understand what is really being assigned to our model here. So first things first, if I connect up our program, let's say uh, the attribute that's just called program, you'll see that this this geometry is way more than just geometry. It actually has an entire generic office program that has been assigned to it here. And you can actually start to understand what this means by going through some of these other attributes here. For example, looking at the people per meter squared, the people per area. So this is actually coming from that description, that generic office program. And you'll see that it's it figured out things like lighting, watts per area is also being assigned in watts per square meter based on that office program. We have things like electric equipment for computers. Those are being assigned based on this. Uh, so there are a lot of things to take a look at here. You can see there is no, no hot water, for example, in this building. Uh, let's see, there is infiltration, but it seems to be very, very small. Uh, and perhaps this is a good time to act, show this other attribute that we have on the component here called the legend par. And what I can do is take ladybug legend parameters here, the same one that we used in our more fundamental ladybug series. And I'm going to drop this on the canvas. And you'll see that I could set the number of decimal places, which will help me better see exactly what the infiltration is here. I'm going to set it to something pretty high, like six, uh, and plug the legend par in here. 
And there we go. We can actually see what that real uh, uh, infiltration per exterior area is, which is, I guess, in cubic meters per second per square meter of, of facade area. Um, so again, we can look at, we can understand all these attributes this way. Uh, we can understand the ventilation per person that's being assigned here. There's also ventilation per area, per floor area, uh, and what else? And we have, of course, schedules. So schedules are basically what dictate, I mean, if, if the lighting watts per, per square meters is what dictate how much lighting is installed in the building, the lighting schedule is what dictates when those lights come on and off, which you can imagine is an important thing to account for when you're trying to estimate energy usage. So you see we have schedules for lighting, for uh, for that electric equipment or that usage of computers. And you can see, again, all these, these schedules are coming from that generic office program. So very clearly, we can already see off the bat that this model was definitely not ready for simulation because we are trying to simulate here a single family home. And the fact that we have all these schedules and loads being set according to an office is clearly going to put us off the mark for our, our energy use estimates. So the very next thing that we're going to be doing in the next video is actually learning how to change this program from a generic office to something else that, that is more representative of a residential single family home. And with that, we're going to hopefully change a lot of these other people density and lighting power density and electric equipment to better reflect a residential program. In the meantime, if you guys want to entertain yourself before you get to the next video, I encourage you to check out all of these attributes that are being assigned when you created these rooms. You'll see all these got assigned way back here when we first created this room from the raw geometry. So it's very useful to understand at least what some of these assumptions are in your model before you go off and simulate. Because as you can imagine, almost all of these are going to have a significant impact in one way or another on the ultimate energy use that you get out of your simulation. So definitely a lot to learn here. Please feel free to go through these in your, in your spare time. And I will see you in the next video where we actually change the program to reflect something other than a generic office.